The BBC licence fee has gone up today, happy Easter, by an inflation busting 6.6%. If you recall, it was frozen for two years, but it's increased from 159 quid to £169.50. And GB News has been out and about in Loughborough, asking what this means for you. Absolutely disgusting. I don't think we should be paying licence fees. I think that if people wanted to watch the BBC, they should have the option to opt in rather than having to be enforced to do so. I think it's wrong that sort of older people were getting it free and now they've started charging you. And I think to put it up that much, the quality of the programmes are just not good enough. I have to pay it, haven't I? It's law of the land, isn't it? Just in case you switch on. BBC, listen to the news. Other than that, it's not nice. They're putting prices up. Well, basically, it's just getting a bit too expensive for the quality. And the, I think they spend too much on certain individuals that always seem to be on TV, and they're very expensive. Surely they would be better off having, low, well, say lower grade, but people that are not so well known, who can probably do the job just as well, Sometimes it's all right. Like when you have when you have um, sport on, or if you have like um, a door a door match or something like that, or snooker, worry like that's all right. But apart from that, no, I don't think it should be that much money, really. Fantastic stuff. Well, joining me now is the former BBC Royal Correspondent, the legendary Michael Cole. Michael, welcome to the show. I hope you're having a wonderful Easter. Let's play devil's advocate. Everything else is going up in price. 6.6% is in line with inflation over the past few years. Surely this is just recompense. The BBC uh, licence fee should go up. Good afternoon, Martin. The licence fee is an iniquitous poll tax that nobody ever voted for and fewer and fewer people actually pay. Young people don't look at the BBC and older people like me are the most despised demographic for the BBC and even the programmes we like, like Antiques Roadshow and Countryfile, are now infected by political propaganda and wokeism so that they are unwatchable. What the BBC is, I'm afraid, is a self-perpetuating oligarchy of like-minded liberal people who think that they know best and they're going to force upon us what they want and we're going to pay for it. This poll tax is unique in the world because that corporation, we're seeing new broadcasting house there, uh, is the only one in the world ever set up not to make money, uh, but to spend it. Uh, and that is uh, iniquitous and it's dreadful. I worked for the BBC for more than a fifth of its existence, more than 20 years. When I joined in 1968, the brigadier who was running the induction course said there were 28,000 staff members, but only 10% of them, 2,800, were actually to do with programmes. And that included the people taking round the scripts, the messengers. Uh, that, at that time, 28,000. Today, it's 22,000. The difference is, in the intervening years, the BBC no longer makes most of its programmes. They're all bought in. Why do you need 22,000 people? Because it's a self-perpetuating bureaucracy and bureaucracies know one thing only and that is to grow and uh, there has never been an empire builder like the bbc not since uh, the roman empire at its greatest extent in ad 117 uh, under the emperor trajan uh, the, everywhere the bbc goes it wants to seek and dominate and in the regions where i live it's trying to dominate the news agenda and it's putting out of business the very, very valuable local newspapers upon who we rely. And what do the BBC do? They actually steal most of their stories to put in their morning uh, news bulletins on the local radio stations. So after 101 years, 101 years not out, it's time for the umpire to raise his finger and point towards the pavilion and say, thank you very much, BBC. You've had a jolly good innings. Goodbye. 
Well, Michael, you certainly bowled a googly there. But what should be done there? What, put this back to the market? Or is there a way of streamlining it? Or are you saying the game is up, put this to the market, it should be subscription only? Uh, this book here, uh, how do we pay for the BBC after 2027? 2027, the date for the renewal of the Royal Charter. That's its license to continue broadcasting. I've written a chapter in it, and I've said the BBC must be destroyed in order to be saved. And you can break up the BBC, put the news, current affairs, Radio 4, all of that uh, into a channel like American PBS public broadcasting system. Put all the culture, entertainment, if you will, into a subscription service. Put all the radio stations, which after all run adverts already, but they're promotions for other programs, make them into fully commercial stations because that's what the BBC is even introducing itself already. As for sport, once it was the jewel in the crown of the BBC, it cannot afford, apart from Wimbledon, and it struggles to pay for that, it cannot afford the sports rights now. Leave okay. it to the people who can. OK, and Michael, I'm afraid, out. simply because of time, we have to leave it there. But bang on the money, as ever. Michael Cole, thank you very much for joining us.